Well, hey guys, welcome back to the Church Podcast. My name is John, this is Corey, this is Dustin. Today we're talking about some something that our church absolutely loves, and that is missions. But there's a specific day yeah. coming up uh, in the near future that's so important to us. It's so important to what, what you'll hear about is called the BBFI, but it's 938 Sunday. So Dustin, can you give us a little bit of insight into 938 yep. and what, what the BBFI is, what 938 is? I think it's helpful for our people. Yeah, so Matthew 9.38 is the reference, and that's where Jesus says, uh, pray to the Lord of har- to the Lord of the harvest that he would send out workers into the harvest. Um, and so it's a prayer, it's Jesus' prayer request that God would raise up more people who would go and would share the good news of the gospel. So in Sunday morning services, we've been showing these little regional video clips. Um, but this 9.38 Sunday is... Uh, It's an initiative from the Baptist Bible Fellowship Missions Office. So our church is a Baptist Bible Fellowship Church. And so that's a network of churches uh, that are mainly associated around mission sending. The headquarters is in Springfield, Missouri. Started in 1950 and began sending missionaries post-World War II back to, you know, places in Europe and in, um, in Asia where these guys who were young GIs during like, World War II. Like crazy ministry yeah. work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they're going back to the places where they fought wars. Yeah. Um, and so um, so in those early days of pioneer missions work where they're taking ships across the sea and, Which you know. Yeah. For yeah. 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 Forever. <laughs> um, really cool ministry stuff. So currently the BBFI has over 350 missionary families around the world. Um I don't know the exact number, but it's well over 350 and, it, you know, all over all over the world. Um, and so the missions office out of Springfield supports those missionaries through processing funds. So as a church, we support about 35 to 40 BBFI missionaries as well as other missionaries. But so those funds we send through the missions office in Springfield, Missouri, and then it, they make sure that the missionaries get it um, around the world. They also help with just logistical needs for missionaries. They help missionaries with financing to purchase housing and and buildings and different things like that. Um, They train missionaries, uh, you know, before they go on the field and they do ongoing training. Um, But the biggest thing they do is just support missionaries. Yeah. Um, And so John Connor up is the is the um, director uh of the missions office and then he has associate directors under him but um they've they've all been missionaries and and now they support missionaries on the field do an incredible job the bbfi missions office is unique in that a hundred percent of what um goes to support missionaries goes to the missionaries so they don't charge right percentage yeah yeah, percentage overhead fee for processing um, the, all of the missions directors from the BBFI raise their own support um, yeah. to, uh, to, to be missionaries with the BBFI. And so our church yeah. supports missionaries, but we also support the missions office to help yeah. what they do happen. Now we have, correct me if I'm wrong, you have personal history, though, too, with the BBFI with your, your grandfather? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, it's it's so not super, but it's, I think it's cool for us as, as yeah. a church to know that this is not something that's brand new for us getting into. There actually is history there. Well, even our church w- is, was planted as a BBFI church. Right. So Orlando Baptist Church was planted as Temple Baptist Church in 1957. Uh, the founding pastor was a guy named Jewel Smith, and he came from a church in Detroit, Michigan called Temple Baptist Church, mm-hmm. which was one of the founding mm-hmm. churches of the Baptist Bible Fellowship. Yeah. Uh, the pastor of that church was a guy named G.B. Vick. And uh, so there were about four major churches in 1950 that started the Baptist Bible Fellowship. Mm-hmm. And so they came out of another group of independent Baptist churches um, and a church in, High, in uh, Springfield called High Street Baptist Church. The pastor was named Bill Dowell and uh, a church in Ohio. The pastor was um, named John Rawlings and, and, and G.B. Vick in Detroit. And, and they kind of came together and they started the BBF to send missionaries. They started Baptist Bible College. And my grandpa was a part of that first graduating class yeah. of Baptist Bible College. So, yeah, so I have family ties, um, but our church has ties right. to, to the BBFI. Right. I just think it's important for people yeah. to know that it's not something brand new yeah. that could fall apart tomorrow. It's something yeah, yeah, that's yeah. been, you know, has history, has some, some yeah. 
You yeah, I went to Baptist to Bible College. You know, that's where I, I was there for a couple of years. Then I graduated from a school in Boston called Boston Baptist College, which is an affiliate school as well. So that's, that's my roots. That's our church's roots. Um, Tarla and Adrian Reeves are missionaries out of our church. Adrian grew up here. They're BBFI missionaries. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of the missionaries that we have in our conference are BBFI missionaries. So, yeah. 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 I do want to, thinking about how this personally connects with us as a church, one of the things that I was the most impressed when we went to the, the big meeting in mm-hmm. Missouri was how heavily they – they're emphasizing church planting and right. getting pastors into the neighborhoods to yeah. to you know plant churches and bring the gospel to people, which is really big for our church yeah. because we have a vision statement. So can you can you connect those dots for our church of BBFI and us and why that's such a good partnership? Yeah. So all missions sending organizations have really a specific target. So for instance, Wycliffe Bible Translators, their goal is to translate the Bible into the language of, of people. Um, so that's what they do. So they send out people who are linguists and they work with nationals to translate the Bible mm-hmm. from the original languages into the language of the people. That's an incredible ministry. Yeah. Um, ministries like crew, you know, have the Jesus film project. Yeah. That's a cool, yeah, that and campus amazing ministry. ministry. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and yeah, and the campus ministry at, at high schools and colleges, uh, pioneers who's another ministry in town specifically to unreached people groups so yep. pioneers missionaries go to the jungles of brazil and um, bbfi missionaries s- the specific emphasis is church planting yep so um, the goal of a bbfi missionary is to plant churches and to turn them over to national pastors and leaders and then plant more churches yeah. um, and, and and you know we believe that the that the local church is the hope of the world and yeah. so that's God accomplishes his mission and ministry through churches. And so, um, so for us, we want to be a church planting church. Um, the missionaries that we support, especially through the BBFI, are church planting missionaries. And, uh, and so we've seen that, you know, we, we see that multiplied. John, I, I, I want to, in the notes, I want to link to the, maybe the BBFI yeah, missions yeah. office website because yeah. there's some cool videos on there that talk about how many churches have been planted. Yeah. So in the description below, yeah. make sure you check yeah. out the, the links we've got for that. Yeah. Well. So over the almost 75 years of BBFI history, the, mm-hmm. the number of churches that have been planted is, crazy. is staggering. Yeah. It really is amazing. So, yeah. um, yeah. Can you go over our vision statement though, for anybody yeah. in our church that's curious about why, why church planting is, is important for us. Yeah. So, um, so our church was a church plant a long time ago, right. 65 years ago. And when our church was planted in this neighborhood right here, 500 South Cimarron Boulevard, uh, this was a young up and coming community. Over the years, our neighborhood has become more of an urban neighborhood. Uh, there's a lot of need in our neighborhood, uh, especially on, on the east side of Cimarron Boulevard. Uh, the neighborhoods over there, um, a, a, lot of, a lot of poverty and challenges. Um, Cimarron Boulevard, as you head a little bit further north, that's where we see a lot of drug addiction, drug use. There's a methadone clinic up there. And so there's a lot of overdoses, yeah. which is what has led us to start Freeway. Um, but, but our church exists in this neighborhood to serve this neighborhood. Right. And so as we have looked at planting churches in the future, um, it's our desire to help plant churches in neighborhoods like our neighborhood. Every neighborhood needs a church, right. but um, but there are not as many people who are excited to plant churches yeah. in hard neighborhoods. Yeah, and so, people want to go plant in Lake Nona. They don't yeah, want to plant right. in Cimarron. And yeah, and want to support if it. you live it's in great, Lake right. Nona, we love you. Yeah, and right. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with it, but like, there's just not as yeah. many people willing to plant in areas that have. You yeah, know, a higher poverty. Yeah. Right. And so our our vision statement is that we want to multiply churches in hard places. Yep. Um, and so when we planted Restoration Church with Pastor Arthur um, two years ago now, almost, um, it was in downtown Sanford, a, a place where other pastors had told Arthur, you shouldn't plant down there. It's too hard. Right. Um, and we thought, well, that then that's exactly that's the place. That's the yeah, right that place. Right. God's answer. In fact, uh, we did a podcast. Yes, go with, check that podcast Yeah, we out. did a podcast about a year ago with Arthur on church planting and, and talk mm. more about that. So you can go and check that out. But um, yeah, so we want to plant churches um, in hard places. 
And really the vision for me personally, the vision for that came through missions yeah. because I was blessed to go on missions trips since I was in about eighth grade. And I would go to places in the world that from our American perspective are impoverished, developing countries um, that, that look like hard places to us. And I would see what a, a church, a missionary church base could look like in a community. Mm. So we see that in Nairobi, Kenya, yeah, where yeah. our church helped to plant Hope Church all, almost 20 years ago now. Yeah. Um, wow. And what, what God has done through that local church in Kawangwari slum, how God has transformed through the local church. And uh, so for me, I've always had a vision to see what could like a, a missionary, a, a church with a missionary mindset. Right. How could that impact a community? Yeah. And so I believe that we're starting to see that. I mean, what God has done in the last three years in the life of our church specifically as we've launched Freeway and more to come about Freeway. It's so many new opportunities coming up. But, but that all comes through church planting um, and, and this idea of missionary church planting, which right. is, mm -hmm. which is like, yeah, it, it's, it, it's, ch it's church with a missionary mindset instead of church with a, a, a we're a group that yeah. we kind of think about ourselves. Right. And all that. Yeah. We're trying yeah. to get out yeah. there. Um, Corey, you've been overseas a lot and seen, you know, specifically with, with Hope Church, um, in Kenya. What, what do you feel like is important for people to take away from something like that over 20 years and how it affected the neighborhood around there? What, what did you experience as, I mean, you've grown up seeing this church uh -huh. kind of build up. How, how has your experience been seeing that with the neighborhood around them? Um, it's amazing. Um, just the changes. Uh, I wasn't there in the very beginning. I went when it was probably, I think my first trip was probably when the church was like four years old or yeah. we had been there for it's a little still while. Early yeah, in the process. very early on. Um, it's just God's faithfulness. Like everything there on that campus today is a, yeah, there was vision, but God blew the doors off of <laughs> the vision. <laughs> vision. Yeah, yeah, and just <laughs> the coolest stuff there is little kids that went to the school that work at the church. Yeah. And yeah. there's a few of them that are serving like, the, the worship leader at Hope Church went to Hope Academy. That's like, so and crazy. it's just, yeah. it's crazy. You go, like, I had a big gap of going over there. And then when I got back, I'm like, what? You're adults now. <laughs> what? Like, what is happening? Um, and, and the fact that it just takes a, a lot of missions and the missionaries, like, we support them monthly. Yeah. And it really does take, like, years. It, it takes years, but it also takes a network, a team of people, like, which is why we believe in giving to missionaries because there's work to be done and there's yeah and it, and it takes like for one organization it takes so much to get that going and yeah. to sustain it and to um, do that but it's every time I'm I learn something new and I'm blown away and it's always I'm a I'm kind of a how to do things minded person so whenever I go over and I'm like how did you get to this? Right. And like I think it blows my mind that like God uses yeah. and gives people vision and brings the right people along for seasons and continues to do things. And it's really cool. Yeah. I think it's so interesting how not only our individual lives change, but it's just like in the book of Ephesus. Um, I don't know if it's from the book of Ephesus or it's the city of Ephesus, but Paul says like the gospel comes in and it transforms things so much that businesses start to shut down. And I've yeah. heard, you know, stories cool. of, of the, it's Kalangari slums, right? Yeah. Uh, hearing stories of that before the church was there. And now what it's like yeah. after yeah. the church is there. And it's just a humongous difference, yeah. which is why church planting is so yeah. unbelievable. And we important. even see that Ephesus, like Colossian, the Colossian church was planted from Ephesus because right. somebody was heard, uh, Epaphras heard it and was like, I got to go tell yeah. my town. Right. Um, and then a church just happened that Paul had never even, Paul didn't start that church. It right. just happened. Right. And it just keeps growing. Yeah. There's a missionary that we support in Kenya um, named Jerry Daniels, um, who has been a missionary in the northern part of Kenya called Nanyuki for probably close to 50 years. Um, and recently, Corey got to sit down with one of his pastors and a Kenyan. John. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Did. Onesimus. Onesimus. Yeah, Onesimus. What a nice guy. Yeah. And uh, I mean, how many how many churches have been planted out of that original so many. like a lot yeah I, like i don't even remember the number but it was 
in the hundreds. Yeah, it was, it was a shocking. lot. It was shocking. Um, so yeah. yeah, so you know Matthew sixteen, Jesus says, "I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it." And and Jesus is building his church, and he calls us into partnership with him in that to go and to mm-hmm. um, and and Matthew nine thirty eight to pray. Yeah. Like what a cool thing that Jesus said. Okay, you know, I, I mean, we maybe you've been in a community group and or a class and. And it ends with anybody have a prayer request, and you know we say, yeah, my aunt's having surgery on her bunions, and you know all the <laughs> delicious, <laughs> but, right? <Gross>. Or I've got, <laughs> I don't know, it's, I don't know why that's the first thing that came to mind, but it's um, important to pray for. Yeah, um, but right, Jesus says, I have a prayer request. Yeah, here's what it is. Yeah, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Pray to God, who is the Lord over all of the harvest, drawing people through the Holy Spirit to himself, that he would raise up workers who would go into the harvest. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what a cool thing that we can pray mm-hmm. that prayer with Jesus. Yeah. Um, and so that's what 938 Sunday is all about. But but in, in context of the missionaries that we're sending all around the world, I mean, we want to plant more churches here. Yeah. Our yeah. goal is to plant a church every three years. And so we're getting close. Um, halfway mark yeah and uh and we don't know where or who that is yet yeah but as we're praying through 938 god we we want to plant a church who and where you know that's Mm -hmm. a prayer to pray um i want to see more missionaries raised up out of our church yeah people to actually go yeah Yeah. like to the far reaches of the world yeah um that's a prayer request to pray god raise up people out of our church who would take the gospel to the whole world, hmm. um, you know, God, th- to, to pray for specific regions. He- here's a cool thing. I heard this uh, maybe a couple of years ago. Um, so Korea, the country of South Korea, is behind the United States, the largest missions sending country in the world. Per capita of population, they send out more missionaries than the United States. 100 years ago, Korea was less than 1% Christian. Yeah, it's crazy. 1923, just after World War I, before World War II, Korea, there were not, there were hardly any Christians. Wow. But after World War II, American missionaries went in in force by the hundreds. Yeah. And the country of Korea was transformed. It, it is a... And now they're sending out more missionaries yeah. wow. than the United States. That's crazy. Okay. In the matter of a hundred years or less, there are places in the world like Afghanistan, for instance, right? When we hear Afghanistan, we, we think about the Taliban and we think about, you know, uh, jihadist and George W. Yeah. Islamic <laughs> extremist. And a, like uh, all, uh, Osama bin Laden, like that's what we think about. But what if in a hundred years, Afghanistan could be sending more missionaries around the world. It's not different than, yeah. than right. Korea. Right. And that happened because people prayed um, that God would raise up people, a- yeah. and then they went. And so, um, like, God has a plan, mm-hmm. and, and we're it as his yeah, people right. and as his church. And that's an honor. That's an honor yes. and a privilege. Yes. And, I, you know... I, I really do hope you guys will check out some of the stuff that's in the links. There's there's a few really cool documentaries as well. There's a do- documentary uh, about a BBF missionary named Laverne Rogers who went to Japan after World War II. Um, this this life of faithfulness and but like we need to get excited. Yeah, it stirs about, our faith. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and excited that we get to be a part of the Great Commission. Um, th- that should move us yeah. Yeah. And, and excite us, and, and it should cause us to pray, God, would you do, would you do it again? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you, East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, um, countries in East Africa, like since the 80s and 90s, really going back to the 70s, there's been like – revival there like people have been getting saved and coming to faith 
the country of the Philippines sends out an incredible amount of missionaries into the world. Yeah. Um, like there are places in the world that are now the mission sending epicenters of the world. Mm. And, and we kind of take for granted our place as the American church. Um, and the truth is we're not sending out nearly as many, right. many missionaries as we used to. Right. Um, but, but, but we can pray, God, would you do it again and yeah. use us? Yeah. I always think about it as, you know, this is our, our time, our season of history. I love going back through history and just seeing seasons of what God does. And it's like, man, if not us, then who, and if yeah. not now, then when this is, yes. our, this is our one yeah. time to, to kind of get after it. Um, and so us as a church, you can tell we're very, very passionate about missions, so we, during this kind of fall season, we've got so many different things going on. Corey, can you kind of walk us through, as a church, what are some of the things we do during the fall to, to highlight and to raise our awareness of missions? Yeah, so we talked about 938 Sunday is the first Sunday of October every year. As we're filming this, it'll be October 1st, 2023. And so that's, what's cool about that is all the BBFI churches are all praying that yeah, prayer. Right. Around on the Sunday world. morning, yeah, and everywhere like around the world. Missions, BBFI missionary churches around the yeah, world. Right. Like we're joining with Korean churches and Kenyan yeah. churches yep. and Tanzania churches. So. Which is, I was just thinking about this as we were talking. Like, I think a lot of times we think about praying for missionaries, and most people pray, like, and don't assume it's, I don't assume it's me when I pray it. But every single missionary that's on the field now, like, the, the amount of missionaries that probably knew they wanted to be a missionary are called to it, like, in their high school age are probably rare. Mm -hmm. All the missionaries out of our church were like grown adults with careers that yeah. God called right. out, yeah. right. and yeah. which is like a supernatural calling yeah. in itself. But uh, even just to be excited about that, like God calling people from our churches yeah. for the good of them and for uh, his, his ministry is amazing. So, yeah. um, so we got our mission stuff, Sunday. yeah. All of it culminates, we have missions week which is the, the first Sunday to the second Sunday of November. Um, we do a lot that week. We have four missionary families come in that we just get to spoil. Um, and that kind of kicks off on that Sunday. But then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we have activities where we get to know them and interview them and have fun and eat together and learn more about what God's doing. And then on Sunday night, uh, November 12th, that's when we make commitments to give financially to missions, which we believe um, in our church is important. I believe it's important in my life that God calls me to be generous, um, to tithe to my local church, and then taking it a step beyond that, we call it sacrificial faith promise missions yep. giving because it takes faith. It's tough, um, but we believe it's important because um, when yeah. you meet these missionaries and you know what they're going to do, you're like, I have to partner with them. Like, Yeah, uh, yeah it, make it, sure to subscribe, though, because our next podcast is on faith promise missions yeah. and why that's important. Yeah. So For sure. So deal. all of it culminates in November. So as we lead into uh, 938 Sunday and a little bit beyond, we're showing these uh, 938 videos of, we already saw North America, we saw Europe, we're going to see Africa this week, and, and we'll look at some other regions showing what people are doing. Um, and, and the one that's the craziest, like you just talked about, is the Middle East. Yeah. There's not a lot of BBFI missionaries. There's not a lot, of, a missionaries lot of missionaries there. Yeah, yeah. It's restricted access. It's hard. Um, but to pray like to pray that prayer like I'm convicted to pray what right. happened in South Korea could happen in any of those countries there. So it's just we want to get it in front of people to know some people are like, I didn't know that people did this. Yeah. Like I didn't know people went to other countries to proclaim the gospel and to plant churches. So um, increasing our education just about what's happening and so that we can pray so that we can be um, encouraged to give and to partner and um, so that we can all be in this together and it's and it's really cool that our church gets we have a wall but like we um, the bible tells us like we're partners in their ministry right. because right. we're financially invested in them so there's right. over 80 m missionaries and organizations that we we kind of get credit for a little bit um, right but i think why we do I, it, I also think the cool thing is with that whole idea of if not us then who if not now then when that's also financial partnership, yeah. prayer partnership. It's not just like, all right, I got to go right now, yeah. but like maybe you're called to these other things. So uh, make sure to click those links in the description because they are an incredibly yeah. stirring for your faith to hear these stories of missionaries. Uh, subscribe to the channel, like this video. Like I said, we're going to talk a little bit more about missions in the next podcast. So tune in. We'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Bye.
A big shout out to all of you at OBC for all of your prayers and giving over the years. It's been almost 20 years between Nicaragua and Guatemala, and we're so thankful for you. Besides our Hope Center ministry at our city dump, we also have our sports ministry, which involves nearly three dozen children from five or six on up through their 20s who receive school scholarships, receive school supplies, also discipleship, sports training, mainly in the um, triathlon, which is huge in Guatemala. And then we have our first responder training where we train hundreds of first responders every year, firefighters, police officers, lifeguards, and even a number of high school students. And they are taught trauma response training, first aid, CPR, and we actually provide equipment for them and back them up if needed. And we just want to thank you. Those are all opportunities for the gospel to go out, and you're a huge part of that. God bless you. Hi, my name is Tanya Heyer, and 17 years ago, me and my husband started Mission Hispana. We have been living in Guatemala for seven years and got introduced to the garbage dump three years ago, where I have been working. We have a church there and work with over 100 families that are currently living in this community. Thank you so much for watching.